Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Real Deal, James Nil. And today I have a game for you against the Flyers, which, uh, which is quite interesting because they are a team that we could possibly match up against in the playoffs. Uh, with them being fourth and, uh, and us starting off this game, I believe, in fifth. Um, today, I am going to talk a little bit about the Winnipeg Jets. Um, they've re-signed some of their key players recently. And I just wanted to give my opinions on uh, what I think of the franchise... And the way they're going, really, uh, in terms of how well they've done in resigning these players for the money they have. And basically, um, stuff along those lines. So in recent days, we've uh, we've seen the Jets resign Zach Bogosian, Blake Wheeler and Brian Little. Uh, all who were restricted free agents. And for me, they've all been relatively overpaid for uh, what they bring to the team. But you have to remember that the Jets don't really have any what you would call star players. Um, in terms of forwards, you know, you're looking at someone like Evander Kane, who, who who you would regard as their star player, but his point production hasn't been particularly good. And basically, they paid him for potential, very much like what they've done with Zach Bogosian. Uh, seven years at just over five mil. You know, you. This is a lot of money. To tie up in a in a kid who who you're paying for potential, really, I would have much rather seen a two year deal at say f at five million, as in a like like what the Bruins did with Tuukka Rask. Here, here's some money. Uh, go show us what you can do. Kind of like what Colorado did with Matt Duchesne as well. But the Jets have obviously have a lot of faith in Bogosian if they're going to give out this kind of contract. I had a look on Cap Geek. And um, looked at some of the similar contracts. And when we're talking about some very good, well-established NHL defensemen in that kind of bracket that he's earning. Uh, he's also the third defenseman now on the Jets to earn over $5 million, uh, with Tobias Enstrom and Dustin Bufflin. Um, Enstrom is a very good uh, stay-at-home D-man. And we know what Bufflin brings, the hard shot, the heavy hitting kind of player i would say he is slightly overpaid though um at 5.25 uh in terms of the forward core they have a lot of uh salary cap there as well uh in terms of andrew ladd oli yokelin um wheeler and little and kane uh devin setaguchi who uh will be due a new contract at the end of this year and you imagine wouldn't take a pay cut on a three million pound deal uh three million dollar deal so it's a, it's an interesting situation at the Jets, really. Um, they kind of have challenged for playoff spots in, in recent years. Uh, but they always seem to fall short at the uh, at the final stage. And they're, they're a team that, you know, they're very close to the cap now as well. Now, I think they're 2 million under the cap. And I always think that a team who's at the cap uh, should be definitely challenging. Um, third playoff spot and the best I could see the Jets doing really is like I don't know coming like 10th maybe in the east oh sorry in the west now uh, now that they've moved that may be a big thing for them as well moving conferences because every time they've matched up against the Penguins last year the Penguins absolutely smashed them I don't know if it was just a bad match up in terms of styles for the Jets but by God, if the Jets had made the playoffs uh, and snuck in at eighth, then the, the Pens would have uh, probably would have swept them um, because they played terrible against the Penguins. Like if you look at Malkin and Crosby's points per game against uh, Atlanta slash Winnipeg, it's incredible. It really is. Uh, that's something for you guys to go check out and be surprised at. Um, so moving to the West. Obviously, it's going to cut down the travelling um, they have to do because they were uh, in a division the furthest possible geographically away from uh, their actual home. So it'll be interesting to see how they adapt to the West, the West style, and also what they what they do going forward in terms of these guys who they've re-signed. You know, you don't just re-sign players to trade them. Well, you you hope they wouldn't, considering that they a bunch of them have no movement and no trade clauses. So for me, the Jets are going to be perennial 
on the bubble team. The teams which are which are fighting out for that final. Uh, sorry, I'm yawning. It's early. Um, fighting out for that final uh, playoff position, but probably always going to fall a little bit short. I'm not quite sure whether the West will suit them more in terms of their style. It may do, which might boost them a little bit. But you know, we're still talking about so many good teams in the West. Um. You know, you got the Kings, the Blues, the, the Chicago, uh, San Jose, Anaheim. Um, so many good teams out Vancouver out there as well now. Um, who, 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 who used to win that uh, North West Division all the time. So it's going to be a hard one. I don't completely agree with the sign. How much money they've given these guys. Um, and what happens, say, in, in three years' time when Mark, Mark Shifley uh, becomes a superstar, which I think everyone's expecting him to to do, and he's in need of a new contract. If you've got players... Sorry, I'm yawning again. <laughs> um, if you've got players on your team who are earning uh, six mil, let's say, then Mark Shifley is going to be the biggest point producer on the team. So what? how much is he going to demand? How much is he going to say, like, Give me seven point five mil. Can they afford that? We know the cap's going to go up, but can they aff- can they afford to uh, to to pay Shifley the money he deserves in three years' time with these guys still on the contract? And also, what do they do about re- uh, free agents as well? You know, Winnipeg isn't the place that everyone wants to play. That's for sure. But if you're looking at a uh, how much would David Clarkson demand from the Jets? Let's say this summer, if all these guys had been locked up to their deals, you know, he might have been asking for more than what he got in Toronto. Um, so that that will be interesting to see. I think the franchise is possibly going in the wrong direction. Uh, we won't know for a couple of years for sure. But uh, for me, they haven't made the right moves in terms of the resignings. Um, resigning players is great. It's the money they've given out and the length. Because, like, Zach Bogosian... What happens if Zach Bogosian has two crappy years? He's, like, virtually untradeable. Who's going to take on five years at 5.1 or whatever it is? It's, it's not good. And as you can see there, we've actually slipped to six behind Montreal. So, currently, we are matching up against the Winnipeg Jets. So, that's going to be interesting. Okay, guys. So, I uh, hope you've had a good one. And I shall see you in episode 32. <laughs>